Um, Representative Betts uh, made comments about the uh, employee state employee pension plan. There were questions raised about the state employee pension plan. Uh, I'm also a state employee. I'm also president of the Greater Bristol Labor Council. Uh, I was involved in the CBAC negotiations a few years ago. I was chief negotiator for my union at that time. And what Representative Betts says is true. The pension plan in the state has uh, been in trouble for many years. Um, we stepped up to the plate um, as a union uh, with CBAC, which is all the unions involved, the state, uh, state Employee Bargaining Agent Coalition, with the governor, okay, and sat down and restructured our pension plan, restructured our health care plan. One of the things that we put in effect was the uh, health care enhancement program where we get our exams. It's a preventative thing to stay healthy, you know, to catch problems um, before they become major problems and you have to have hospital stays, so on and so forth, okay? Um, this is something that we have to do every year. And what we did in negotiating this agreement and ratifying it uh, is we did save the state money uh, and also we averted major layoffs because if we did not uh, ratify this deal, there could have been layoffs in this state. And that would have been disastrous to have employees laid off. Uh, you know, they own homes, they pay taxes, and you know, we're in a situation as we're in right now where there is a deficit. So, you know, you need those people working. So, there are things that we did and we stepped up to the plate in working with the governor in order to resolve these issues. Thank you. And I, I just want to emphasize one of the good things was that Health Enhancement Act. I did not realize I, it was some absurd number, like 70%, maybe even higher. Uh, the number of state employees who didn't, one, have a primary care doctor, and two, did not even have a physical exam. So you can imagine without getting any kind of uh, medical history or treatment, you're going to really be waiting until the last moment when you get really sick and you're going to have some very, very high expenses. So that's worked out very well, uh, and there have been some real savings. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the highest one in the in the contracting there. The only area where Mike and I disagree on is, uh, and it's more philosophical, and, and we'll be talking about it this Saturday, has to do with, um, uh, it's my belief that the government has promised more than it can deliver. They don't have, in other words, they're spending, you know, they're, they're making too many spending commitments and they don't have the money to back it up. Uh, and it hasn't been just one year. This has been going on for a long time. Uh, my view is, if you really accept, which a lot of people are still in denial, but if you really accept that we don't have the money, and I do, and I mean we don't have the money, I'm not going to make another promise. What I'm going to do is try and find a different way of doing it. Uh, the one that, that Senator McKinney suggested in uh, having somebody look into the uh, financial uh, benefits and pros and cons of doing it, he mentioned in social services, for example, uh, if you took, let's say, like a half of the, all the social service programs and outsource that or privatize that to the, um, to the nonprofit sector, okay, uh, his assumption and mine is as well, and if we're wrong, then we'll say that. You don't lose jobs, and those people in the nonprofit sector who haven't seen a raise but 1% in eight years versus what's going on in the public sector, um, I don't believe that they would, uh, well, I know they wouldn't lose a job. They should get a pay increase, um, and anything else that goes along with that transfer. The one thing they will be missing, though, is very substantial, is they won't have the tremendous state health care benefits that we have as public employees now. So there's a big trade-off there, but I still maintain the basic premise. We do not have the money. The more we deny that, the more trouble we're getting into. We just don't have the money. It's not a question of liking it. If you really believe you don't have the money, you have to do something radically different. And it doesn't have to be that. That's just one suggestion. But whatever it is, it better happen pretty darn well soon because it's getting to be really, really murky out there right now. Did you want to say something?